spring curve. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Hear you. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, this is Kurt from my house. I am uh, playing host today. Um, the bishop has uh, asked churches to give their pastors and staff time off. And so we're making them uh, sit out today. And uh, they may join to listen. I don't know. But um, what we're going to have instead is a, a uh, production that the bishop a video that the bishop and her staff put together uh, of worship service. It's a video that's out on the website that I'm going to share from my computer. Um, uh, first, I think we, while that is going on, I think uh, feel free to use our Zoom chat to talk among each other, to share prayers. Um, and after the video, uh, we'll come back and give any announcements. Um, and uh, finish up. The, the video is about half an hour. Um, I think before we go to that, why don't we um, share any specific prayers that we want to keep in mind today 
um, and I'll go first. I've been asked to share uh, prayers for Dorothy Meggers, uh, who's in skilled care at uh, DeWitt Hospital. So uh, prayers for, for her recovery. Um, would anyone like to else like to share at this point? Okay, if you think of something when we come back, you can. Um, so I'm gonna try and share my screen and start this video. You'll, uh, if uh, a test I did earlier is any indication, you might want to have to turn up your uh, volume on your computer. Once I get it started, I'll turn it way up on mine, but I found out on a test that that still wasn't very loud. So just as a, as a word of warning. Here we go. Let's see if I can. Good morning, friends. I'm Bishop Laurie, and I am delighted to greet you in the name of the risen Christ. You have been worshiping in your own homes for a number of weeks now because of COVID-19 restrictions that do not allow us to worship together in our church buildings. Our clergy have been working diligently to learn new skills in live streaming, Facebook Live and YouTube, as well as hold meetings and small group studies through Zoom and Microsoft Teams. In addition, many of you are engaged in outreach and mission to your communities, especially as the unemployment rate and the need for food and material assistance in Iowa grows day by day. I want you to know that your pastor or pastors have been working tirelessly to plan worship, lead meetings, and provide pastoral care in new ways because of COVID-19. The Apostle Paul says in the sixth chapter of his letter to the Christians in Galatia, so let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. My brothers and sisters, the needs seem endless right now, and our leadership is weary. Their bodies need rest, and their spirits need revival. That's why I, along with our cabinet members, have asked all of our clergy, worship leaders, and staff to take three consecutive days away from the church sometime in the next month. Three days to rest, rejuvenate, have fun, read a good book, or play with their children and grandchildren. Remember, rest is built into the very fabric of our world as God rested on the seventh day after finishing the work of creation. This worship service has been planned by the cabinet of the Iowa Annual Conference so that you and your pastor can be inspired and encouraged. We are especially grateful that our beloved Bishop Deb Kesey is going to be preaching this morning. None of us knows what the future will look like here in Iowa or around the world after COVID-19, but I do know this, we will not remain the same. We have been changed forever and we understand in a much deeper way what it means to be the body of Christ, one human family joined together in love and hope as we seek healing and wholeness for all. May God bless your worship experience today, and I invite you to join me in prayer. Good Lord, as we begin our worship today, keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain those who are anxious and fearful or who are now unemployed. Lift up all who have tested positive and are being treated in hospitals and comfort families who have lost loved ones. May we rejoice in your grace, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to love our neighbor, walk with the fearful, and assure those who are isolated right now of our support and encouragement. Give ourselves wholly to you, Lord. May this time of worship fill our hearts with peace and inspire us to be your vessels of hope. Amen. 
Hello, I am Carol Kress. I am the North Central District Superintendent. And I have the privilege today to share an opening prayer with you. So let us place ourselves into an attitude of prayer. Breathe in fresh, the Holy Spirit. And let us pray. New every day is your love, great God of light. And all day long you were working. I'm just going to stop for a second and see if I can't turn it up more on my computer. So when I start this back up, we'll see if that helps. This <coughs> meant serious worries about finance, even if you want to be buying for you, caring for children at home, even church that place where we find balance in life and fellowship and hope, even that has been taken away from us by the COVID-19 virus. And what I think is even more unsettling is that we have no idea how long this quarantine is gonna last or what our new normal will look like when this crisis is finally over. It's a time of deep loss, great uncertainty. And we are all doing the best we can to cope. For me personally, our family has been unable to celebrate my dad's 98th and my mom's 96th birthdays. And just last week, the day after her birthday, mom went to the hospital, but no one could be with her, not even her husband for 76 years. Strange and unsettling times we live in. 
it was also a very different experience because I felt as though I almost completely missed this season of Lent. And for me, the season of Lent is, is one of the holiest times of the entire Christian year. I felt that loss keenly. As you know, Lent begins with ashes and the call to repentance and the invitation to walk with Jesus through his final acts of ministry. It's during Lent that we read of the cleansing of the temple, the lament over Jerusalem, the parable of the talents, the sharing of the greatest commandment, the triumphal entry, the garden of Gethsemane, the abandonment and betrayal by his friends, the crucifixion, and finally ending in his death. That journey through Lent is what helps prepare me for the joy and the celebration of Easter Sunday, the most glorious Sunday of the entire year. But even the fullness of that experience was taken away from us all this season. Now, yes, I was privileged to participate in wonderful online worship, and it was beautiful and moving and inspirational as we sang along with the hymns and responded to the liturgy as we sat in our living room. But I still struggled with feeling distanced from it all. Because I love Easter Sunday. I love it. I love the people. I love the hallelujahs and the lilies and the children and the music and the full to capacity pews. I love Easter Sunday. But the truth is, as much as I love it, I need Easter. You see, Easter isn't just about the high we get on that Sunday. It's really about what happens afterwards on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and the rest of the year. Because Monday Since last Easter, I'm sure we've all confessed to hundreds of misdeeds and misthoughts and mistakes. But imagine if you had done what the disciples had done. Because the truth was, they had saved their own hides at Jesus' cross. No matter how they tried, I'm sure that image of those three crosses was indelibly imprinted in their minds and souls. How do you get past that memory? So that was Friday, the day he died. Then came Saturday. Saturday must have been one of those strange days that feels a little bit like you're out of kilter with the rest of the world. My guess is there had been little, if any, sleep the night before. And so Saturday was a long day's day after a sleepless night. We've experienced days such as that when we stayed up all night with a sick child or when we sat at the bedside of someone who was critically ill or dying, and the next day is just one of those days when you walk around in a fog, doing almost automatically the things that you have to do. I think there's Saturday must have been like that. And remember also, Saturday was the day they went to church. It was their Sabbath. In Luke, we read, on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments. That was their habit for that holy day, and I would expect they followed that commandment to spend the day in meditation and prayer and worship. But this Sabbath is different. This was a sad, broken, unreal kind of day. So, Friday he died. Saturday they went to church. And the next day, the first day of the week, which would be like our Monday, at sunrise, Mary went to the tomb, and that was the day all heaven broke 
disciples. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. It's a great announcement, but it wasn't enough for the disciples. For as we read on, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews. Did you get that? Even after Mary's amazing announcement, they were still hiding behind those locked doors. They were still afraid. They were still uncertain. Go on. The doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the, fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and he said, peace be with you. After this, he said, he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, so I now say, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, Easter isn't just about what happens on Sunday, it's about what happens on Easter Monday. It's about those times we most desperately need to hear the message, the good news of Easter. Well, you see, it was the first day of the week. It was Easter Monday that Christ came to the disciples in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their anxiety, in the midst of their uncertainty. He came, offered peace, gave them courage to live into their faith and into whatever uncertain future was in front of them. And because of that encounter, their lives were never Bishop Sharon Zimmerman Rader is a beautiful, delightful woman, full of life and vibrancy. She has also had to deal with breast cancer. And I remember several years ago, she wrote an article for the Interpreter Magazine. It's an article about Easter, and I want to share her words with you. She said, Easter is the time for heralding the sometimes unanticipated gifts from God. I was only seven or eight when my great uncle Bill died. My parents took me to the funeral with them, carefully preparing me for what would take place. I realized the somberness and sadness of the event, and I worried about my parents' and grandparents' grief at the service. But then we went to Aunt Mary's house, and everyone ate, and everyone told stories, and everyone laughed, and some of the sadness went away. It was not what I expected, she goes on to say. My fear of this disease that has invaded my body, or maybe we could say the fear of this virus that has invaded our world, leaves me anxious, wondering about the future, preparing for the worst. A new grandchild, our first, is born, and within two or three months, he's smiling. He smiles in response to his parents' love. He smiles when I look at him and say, you been, and his smile takes away my anxiety helps me look to the future with anticipation and gives me hope. It was not what I expected. Easter is God's invitation to laugh at our expectations that are too small. It puts God back in charge in the center of life. Do you hear that? Easter puts God back in charge in the center of Peace. Receive. Friends, Christ's invitation is for us as well. Christ comes to us and he says to us, peace. And he offers us the transforming power of this Holy Spirit. And instead of fear, we can begin to love, live our lives in the power of his promise. Peace. Receive my Holy Spirit. I believe Jesus comes to us the same way he came to his followers 2,000 years ago. He came to Mary the day after the Sabbath as the gardener. He came to Thomas and the 12 on the evening of that same day as they were hiding in fear. He cooked breakfast for Peter who thought he was just another fisherman. He came to those on the road to Emmaus as just another traveler. Jesus comes as he always does in unexpectedly simple and normal ways. So Easter is our reminder that God is still in control no matter how out of control our lives feel right now. 
It is a reminder that the risen Christ, we celebrated and worshiped on Easter morning, will go with us to wherever we are on Monday. Because I also believe that as sacred as the time is on a glorious Easter Sunday, the truly sacred moments are found more often than not in these everyday moments of people life. The moments which, if we don't look with more than our eyes and hear with more than our ears, we will miss altogether. Moments that happen on Easter Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday. can recognize him in the faces we meet on the street. We can see him in the eyes of the people who come to our food pantries. We can see him in the moments shared with our children, our grandchildren, even if by FaceTime. We can see him in the fellowship of the church, scattered though we are, in every facet of everyday, ordinary, Monday life. Jesus this morning, I want to close with the words of a book that has been helpful for me in my faith walk. It's by Albert Schweitzer. It's his classic book, The Quest of the Historical Jesus. I want you to hear his words and let them prepare you for the Easter that comes tomorrow and tomorrow. Hear the words of the great Albert Schweitzer. Jesus comes to us as one unknown, without a name. As of old, by the lakeside, he came to those who knew him not. He speaks to us the same words, follow me, and sets us to the task which he has to fulfill for our time. He commands, and to those who obey, whether they be wise or simple, he will reveal himself in the toils, conflicts, and sufferings which they must pass through in this fellowship, and in an ineffable mystery they shall learn in their own experience. Friends, it's Easter Monday. Receive the Holy Spirit and find peace. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I'm glad that you are here in the presence of God. What is it that you brought to God? What are the needs? of your family? What are the needs of your community? Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, from different places, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, into your house to receive grace, peace and mercy for we believe that in your house there is a sense of acceptance in your house there is a sense of forgiveness in your house there is a sense of guidance you know how to guide your people you know how to embrace your people you know how to listen to our prayers when we lift them up Oh, gracious God, hear us when we pray for those who are suffering, those who are going through difficult times, those who have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities. We pray for the doctors who are fighting very hard to help your people. We pray for our nurses, asking you to make of their hands healing hands. We pray for all people who are trying to help those who are suffering. Grant them the courage to continue to do what they are doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers when we pray for the leaders of this country. From President Trump to all our governors and men. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers when we pray.
pray for presidents around the world, when we pray for kings, emperors, when we pray for all leaders around the globe, asking you to grant them a great vision for healing for their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we want to pray for all our pastors, wherever they are. Grant them the ability to lead your people during these difficult times. We lift up district superintendents. We pray for all our bishops within the United Methodist churches as well as all denominations. Grant them the wisdom to lead your people. As your people who have been forgiven, as your people who have been received in the house of the Lord, as your people who have been Blessed by God. Enable us, O oh God, to pray the Lord's prayer as you taught your disciples over 2,000 years ago. And we are going to say this prayer together. You don't mind me because I am going to offer my prayer in French. Notre Père qui es au ciel. Que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain quotidien. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'en partie le règne. Et la gloire au siècle du ciel. Et pour God's people say, Amen. Hi, I'm Ron Carlson, Northwest District Superintendent, and I have never been more proud in my life than to be an Iowa UMC person. As I watch the pastors and lay leaders across the state reaching out and being the church to God's people. We see people using Facebook, YouTube, websites, phone calls, letters, and notes. It's amazing the way that they continue to reach out. Now, I know at this time, many of our people are not in a very good place. Some of you have been affected negatively by the farm economy, floods, job losses, and sickness. Please know that you are in our prayer. I want to encourage those of you that have been continue to be blessed by God in this time, though, and I ask that you do your part to support your local churches with your usual offering and gifts. Know that this would be a perfect time for you to give even more and give a special gift in this time of need. Please remember that together we can do more than even one of us can do by ourselves. You can give your gift by electronic transfer, you can mail it to the church, or you can drop it off. They will gladly receive it in many different ways. I'd like you now to pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you do. We ask that you be with those who are suffering and those who are sick. We ask that you be with our first responders and caregivers. We thank you for those gifts <coughs> you continue to give to us in the many ways in which you bless us. As we receive them, help us to use them in ways that will grow your kingdom. Grow. Okay, apparently there are issues with the video. Let's see if my computer can catch up here.
Well, I guess that's all there was meant to be today. Uh, there was all that was left on there was a song um, that was good that they shared. Um, I apologize for the sound issues. Uh, invite you if you want to this uh, video as well as uh, a couple others are available on the uh, the, the website um, for the Iowa conference. Uh, there's a longer one with some more mu with some music in it, and there's another video that has just the sermon in it. Um, I think at this point I'll open it up for uh, announcements. Uh, I have I do have a couple. I uh, will was asked to share. Uh, one more from Susan. I see Susan, you're on. Do you want to go ahead and give yours or should I go ahead and find it? Uh, I think I remember. Uh, tomorrow is the blood drive at church. We have times from 4.30 to 5.30, a few times left. Otherwise, everything is filled. You have to make an appointment. They aren't allowing walk-ins. So if anyone would like to, to donate tomorrow at the blood drive, we'd welcome that. Also, just an update for everyone. We had some sump pump issues at the church. Uh, Friday, we discovered water in the basement when I did my walkthrough. So we had a, a big crew that came and helped us uh, get the water out. We got a new sump pump and everything seemed dry this morning and we have some fans drying, drying out the basement. So hopefully that issue is taken care of. Thanks for everybody for helping too. That's it. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you for leading us today also. Thank you, Susan. I, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Katie Hess. If you have not seen out in Facebook, Katie's uh, started a kickstarted our Facebook ministry and I think has been doing doing a great job. So thanks to her. If you get a chance, um, go out and like the uh, Do It UMC page and start getting the uh, extra messages that she's been adding. Uh, anyone else have an announcement to share? Okay, in that case, I think I'll close it uh, with my favorite uh, benediction from Reverend uh, Wesley. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace. Thanks, everyone.